An inexperienced real estate salesman asked his boss if he could refund the deposit to an angry customer who had discovered that the lot he had just bought was underwater. What kind of salesman are you, the boss scolded. Get out there and sell him a boat. What is going on? My name is Bit Wise Guy, and today we're going to be discussing ownership in Rust. So, without further ado, let's get started. The fundamental question that we have to ask ourselves when dealing with the Rust programming language and its ownership system is, what actually is ownership? The definition of ownership is the act, state, or right of possessing something. I'm going to add something to the dictionary definition. I'm going to say that ownership is the transfer of the currently possessed entity to another party which causes the previous owner to no longer have access to the object that is being transferred. Let's take the example that I've got for you up on the screen. So on the screen in front of you, we've got two people. We've got Bob and we've got John. Now, in the middle of the screen there, you can see that there's a driver's license. And for the purpose of our example, the driver's license is the entity or the transferable object. In the current environment state, Bob is the owner of the driver's license. But in the short future, John will be the ownership. And so between that process, we have something called transfer of ownership. Bob is going to transfer ownership of that driver's license to John. And by doing so, Bob will no longer have access to this driver's license. Now, let's imagine a real world scenario where Bob is actually stupid enough to hand over his driver's license to John. Bob will, after the process of handing John the plastic card, no longer have access to this physical entity. Later that week, Bob gets pulled over by the police while driving. His license is requested by the police, and when Officer Meme sees Bob reaches in and grabs nothing from his wallet, Bob is placed under arrest. Let's say you have one bit of data that is assigned to a variable, and we'll call this variable A. Now, let's say, for example, that you move the data to another variable binding, and let's call that variable B. Then, after you've already moved the data to variable B, you try and access the data in variable A. This is called a segmentation fault, and it is very common in languages like C and C++. If you think about it logically, it makes sense, though, because accessing nothing is essentially impossible. Ross deals with this very problematic issue at compile time through what is called static analysis. Rust ensures that the variable that is being accessed actually points to some bit of data, because as I previously mentioned, accessing nothing is impossible. Alright, let's jump into some code, enough rambling on, and let's see how this actually works in practice. Rust ensures there is exactly one binding given for any resource. For example, if we have a vector, we can assign it to another binding. Let's have a look at how that works. Let's say, for example, we have a vector. Now, I'm going to say let v is equal to vec. And I'm going to use the vec macro to create our vector. I'm just going to say 3, 4, 5. That should be enough for us. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let v2 is equal to v. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to make sure that this runs. So we're going to say cargo, cargo build. And as you can see here, we've got an unused variable v2. All right. Cool. So... Essentially, what's going to happen now is I'm going to try and use uh, V. I'm going to try and put it out on the screen. And we're going to have a look at what actually happens. So if my terminal would stop doing all crazy weird things on me here, what we're going to do is we're going to say print line. And what we're going to do is we say V and we'll just get element, I don't know, one, uh, for example. So let's save that and we'll say cargo run. And as you can see here, we've got an error and it says value used here after move move occurs because v has type blah 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 which does not implement and um, that actually says trait but we'll go into that in a minute um, abort due to error could not compile move semantics essentially uh, without getting this too complicated too quickly uh, vectors do not implement the copy trait now i want to preface this by saying that all of the primitive types in uh, Rust do implement the copy trait. And thus, this example won't work because what, what will end up happening is instead of moving the data from one binding to another, you're actually going to copy it. So you're going to have two instances of the data bound to, do, bound to two different bindings. Let's just quickly prove that the ownership of V's vector has indeed been transferred over to V2. So what we're going to do is we are going to simply say print line v2 
uh, with the exact same accessor to the element that we had before. So we'll save that and we'll say cargo run. And as you can see here, we've got the number four printed out with absolutely no errors. A similar thing happens when we transfer ownership into a function. So let's have a look at how that works. I'm gonna be using the example from the Rust book. So firstly, we're going to define our function. So let's say fn take, and we're going to take a variable name called v, and the type is going to be vec i32. And there we go, and it's not gonna have a return type. Alright, so what we're going to do is essentially, we're not going to return anything since we have no return type and what happens inside the function for the purposes of uh, this example is actually not that important. So instead of saying print line, what we're going to do is we are going to say uh, take v and we're going to remove this. So we're going to say take v and then what we're going to try and do is actually print line the uh, variable v. So what we'll do is we'll say v and we'll say, uh, sorry, one. And let's save this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, cargo run here. And as you'll see, we'll get pretty much the same uh, sort of error. So we'll say cargo run. And as you can see here, value used here after move. And that is essentially because the function took ownership of that, of that piece of data. Now, the reason that this is important is because the function may or may not return ownership uh, to the variable in which uh, it was given from. So that's pretty much all that there is for this part of ownership. Stay tuned for the next part where we're going to go more over the borrowing syntax and everything else that is to do with the ownership and borrowing system in Rust. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. I put so much effort into this one, so I really hope you guys appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Cheers.